Why would you ever play or practice anything for five hours? I've got to get a new job. It's just isn't working out well for me. Recently, I actually did my first live stream here on YouTube and it was a really long one. It was five hours, which maybe I should have started with a smaller one just in case something went wrong. But I, I played uh, the same drum lick or the same sticking for five hours. Okay, now why did I do that? I've been getting a ton of comments about uh, and questions about comments as in you should never practice this way comments and questions as in why would you do this and so i kind of just wanted to speak to that real quick and give you a little insight as to why this is not the way you should normally practice but why did i do it and why did it make sense for where i am and should you ever do this all right so let's go back to and i've got i've got really four specific reasons why i did it some more important than others. But going back to college, I used to pull long uh, uh, practice days. You know, I'd do like five, six hour sessions. And now knowing what I know, if you've listened to me for at all, I mean, I just put, made a post about practice and how you don't have to practice for these huge, long, you don't have to have six hours of practice every day. If you're practicing an hour, hour and a half every day and it's focused and you have a plan and you're in there and you're like, you're in it while you're in there and you leave tired, that's what, that's really all you need to do. Can you go longer? Sure, but there's been studies that have shown that past a certain time you start seeing declining results and then they actually start going backwards. Like you start doing some damage in that you're just really hacking away whenever your brain is done with it. Um, so I realized that the way I practiced in college and everything could be changed to be much more effective. I did like that whenever I, I pulled a lot of long sessions in college, I did a lot of split schedules. So I do like two hours in the morning, an hour and a half before lunch, an hour in the afternoon. Those days worked much better because I had some recovery in between sessions than just a long five hour, six hour stretch. But why would I do this? So let's, let's break that out. Um, not one of the reasons, but I really enjoyed hanging live with, with you all. That was a fun thing. I don't get to do that often on YouTube. I do it all the time in my M members area, my website, but um, I really enjoyed that. So you'll be seeing more live streams just because it was fun. So the number one reason why I played the same thing for five hours was uh, no one told me when I was coming up that, hey, Steven, you'll get gigs that require you to play for four to five hours straight with no breaks. And if they'd have told me that, I'd have been like, oh, wow, I need to work on my endurance. That's really not what you need to work on. What you need to work on is this guy, your focus muscle. Because whenever I'm in a club, and here in Nashville, when I was in New Orleans, we would play five-hour gigs, but the five-hour gigs would consist of usually five sets. And a set was 45 minutes, so we'd do a double set, an hour and a half, 30-minute break, double set, so another hour and a half, 30-minute break, and then we would have uh, one more set, a 45, a 30 to 45-minute set to tag onto the end of that. If it was a really long night, you would do double, 30-minute break, double, 30-minute break, double, okay? But you had a break in there. In Nashville, no breaks, right? So if I go to a gig and it's from 10 to, you, you know, if I go to a gig and it's from uh, 10 a.m. till 2 in the morning, that is straight, if it's from 9 a.m. to or 9 p.m. to you know 9, 10, 11, 12 to, to one, uh, that's four. If it's nine to two, that's five hours straight. The only way I get a break is if one of the other guys can carry a song, for for you know a simple song on the drums, and I can go to the bathroom and come back. Okay, so when you say you should never practice for five hours, my response to you would be to you, well then how in the world am I going to get ready? for a five hour gig, a four hour gig that I don't get breaks on. So my number one thing was I've started gig, picking up gigs more. There was about a 10 month period where I just turned everything down. I was really focusing on teaching and stuff. And I've started picking up more now uh, whenever they come my way. And that's an area that 
is hard when you're if you're in an environment with a lot of distractions. You're playing with a band, and you've got TVs up there. You're in a club. There's other things going on. It's hard to keep your focus. In hour three or four, you start going, "Oh, I wonder what's on TV. I wonder if the Preds are winning." Like you're you, all these things. And I never liked that. I remember distinctly one night in New Orleans, I was playing, and I was just tuned out. I'd been playing the same songs the same way for months, and I was watching a TV show. And then I was like, "What am I doing? This is what I've wanted to do my entire life, and I'm just checked out." Now, I, yes, it was the 8,000th time I played that song, but that doesn't mean that it was the first time for that person that I was playing for him. It was the first time they ever heard me play it. They don't deserve to have me zoned down, and the music doesn't deserve that. So I need to learn how to focus through that and always find value and always try to bring my A game. So the first reason is because life needs to imitate art. Okay, and the art that I play with some of my gigs is their long gigs. If you tour with some big artists and they have a lot of songs, you'll pull sometimes two and a half, three hour concerts. This is a, it's a thing, okay? So this was not a, a, an example of how you should practice every day. This was because it was an extreme version of me practicing for a long time to work on my focus muscles, okay? To see how long I could focus. And it's actually interesting if you go back and watch it, which I don't know that anybody will ever watch five hours of that. You shouldn't. Um, but if you scrub through and watch it, my focus begins to go there towards the end. And that's totally natural. I knew it would happen, so no biggie there. So the first reason is I'm actually called upon to do that in the working world to play that long. So why would I not pull a couple practice sessions to practice that? The second reason that I did that was um, to demonstrate in long form, obvious, how I go through my practice session, whether it's an at 30 minutes long or whether it's five hours long. So if you watch, I very methodically go through this sticking. It's one sticking. I started on the snare, I started very slowly, and we're there for a long time until I get it down. And then I start moving it through the zones. It's through the things that I teach on my website in the members area. Zoning, assembly lines, feedback loops, all of those different things or concepts that I teach to my students all of the time and talk about constantly in, in my lessons on the website. So the zoning, I went to zone one, I went to zone two, I went to zone three, I went to zone four, I went to zone five. Went back through them. Then I started zonal mixing, and that's where we're, we're mixing which zones we're playing. Then I started to mess around with the different subdivisions. So we were in eighth notes. Now we're going to sixteenth notes. Now we'll go to triplets. Now we'll go to quintuplets, sextuplets. I don't think I got to septuplets, but I do think I got to thirty-second notes. I can't remember. Um, oftentimes, if I skip one, it's going to be the septuplet because it's. I'm not as comfortable with septuplets as I am quintuplets and the rest of them. Um, I mean, we'll just be honest here. And um, so I'll go through that, and then you saw me switch to, okay, let's make it a groove. You also saw me start to go through the, what I talk about, the big seven, dynamics, groove, articulation, um, uh, flow, melody, uh, timing, and technique. So those are other concepts that need to be present in any exercise you're going through. So you'll see me start going through articulation, I'm accenting different parts of the pattern. So I wanted to show in big format how my practice sessions look, whether they're 20 minutes or whether they're five hours. Again, at the end, you start seeing my, my focus going. That last hour, I was just, my, like I was fried. But I'd, I told everybody, I'm going five hours. So at that point, it was just make the timer. And sometimes on gigs, you gotta make the timer. Like you just gotta make it go that long. And so um, that would be the other reason. So the, that'd be the second reason. First reason is I'm actually called upon to do it on a gig. And if you've never played gigs that long, you just don't know that you have to do that sometimes. Second reason would be I wanted to demonstrate what a practice session looks like, not what you should, how long you should practice every day. That was not what that was about. It's just this is what an organized practice session should look like. I had a plan going in. I understood what I wanted to go through. I didn't work on 18 topics. I worked on one topic and went as deep as I could. The next thing was that had been a week where I had not gotten to play my drums very much. And I decided the day before what I was gonna do. So a lot of my time is spent doing with the members on my website. We have an awesome community on the, on, in the Drum Better Daily program. And uh, so I spent a lot of time in the forums, talking to students, answering questions. In the comments, I spent a lot of time producing content. I spent a lot of time managing a business, okay, like the nuts and bolts. And I also spent a lot of time in my email answering questions from you all as well as a ton of them from my students. I spent all day in my email yesterday because I was gone for a week and a half. So I was catching up. Those are answered for students in video format. They're answered in audio format. Like I'm, I'm in it and I'm doing the thing. 
But that means that a lot of times if something suffers, if it comes to you needing an answer and you're a student of mine to a question you've got on something you're working on or I get to practice, you're going to get your answer because that's my job, right? So this had been one of those weeks where I spent just, it was a lot of hands-on time with the business and with students, and I love that, but I, I hadn't got to touch my drums. So I literally said, look, for five hours, I'm committing to a live stream and telling people I'm gonna do it, and then I can't, like, I can't go answer questions. I gotta be there. So part of that was, and I was, I was giddy, like I was really looking forward to it. Like I'm gonna get to hang with everybody, I'm gonna you know, be there for five hours, and by the hour five, I'm like, oh crap, I don't wanna touch the drums anymore. But it was great, because I got that five hours, and then the next day, that was a Thursday, the next day, I had a gig, which was a three hour gig, no breaks. The next day after that, that was a three and a half hour gig, excuse me, on Friday. Saturday, I had a three hour gig with no breaks. So. It was great. I got, and then Sunday I played another gig actually that morning uh, at a church here in town. So I had like four days of just great playing, great time on the drums. So that was part of it. That would be reason three was I, I just wanted time with my instrument. Um, I do not recommend practicing five hours daily. I would tell you if you can get you an hour to an hour and a half in, if you're really wanting to be serious about it, that's all you need if you're organized and you're focused. If you're just a hobbyist, if you can get 30, 45 minutes in a day, you're doing awesome. Can you get more? Sure, but once your focus starts to go, you need to go do something else, okay? Uh, the fourth reason, and one I don't talk about a lot on here, but we'll go ahead and dive into here, is um, algorithm. So if you're on YouTube or any social media, and you're not paying attention to how that social media works and you're not trying new things and you're not attempting new things, then it, it's, why are you doing it? You know what I'm saying? Like if that's gonna be part of what you do. So with YouTube, algorithm is big. I had never tested live streaming on YouTube and I just wanted to see what it did. I wanted to see what it did to subscriber, I wanted to see what it did, which is really not the most important thing in the algorithm. It's like up here is important things and down here is subscribers to YouTube, just so you know. I wanted to see what it did to watch time most of all. I wanted to see what it did to watch time duration, so the amount of time they spent on the video. I wanted to see what it did uh, with uh, related videos in that did they jump to other videos. That's very interesting to me to watch those. Um, and just so you'll know, this video Two days after we went live, I had the highest watch time I've ever had on my channel in the history. Okay, so did something right. There was a peak there that, oh wow, the live streaming day didn't do that, but two days later, that's interesting to me. Okay, so I wanted to see what live streaming did with the channel algorithm. I wanted to see what the watch time did. I wanted to see what long form content like that did uh, with the channel because I never. I never post that long. I've posted up to an hour, I think. But that's the longest I've ever posted. So I wanted to see what a video that long looked like on the channel. Did it do anything? I, I, these are things that I just wanted to see. Because YouTube, the algorithm, the way it works, they care very much about watch time. Watch time, watch time. So they would, the, you, it's better if a person watches five minutes of a five hour video than if they watch five minutes, uh, or excuse me, if they watch one minute of a five minute video. Does that make sense? It's not necessarily views, it's how it, they view that view. So five minutes of a five hour video is better than one minute of a five minute video. And that, to them, to their algorithm. So that's the fourth reason, like just a very practical, I'd seen some other people do it. Uh, Adam Neely, there was another, uh, you, many of you mentioned him, uh, did a fantastic uh, video and he's very smart. Adam's very, very smart about his channel and there's some, uh, several others that are very, very smart about their channels. Um, and then there was another bass player that done a five hour slapping bass and uh, but well before Adam did his video. There's several, but really the idea is not like play this thing for five hours, it's what's the algorithm doing, what's a long form video, live streaming, all those things, testing things out with the channel. So that is the reasons. Number one, very practical reason, I get called upon to do this on the gig and can I focus for that long whenever I'm in a, in a, a spot that I need to. Number two, I wanted to demonstrate whether I have 30 minutes or whether I have five hours, what it looks like when I go through my practice routine. I wanted to show all my flaws and all. I wanted you to show what something sounds like whenever I first start working on it and how bad it sounds and how when you practice you should be sounding bad until you sound good and then you should start sounding bad again because you constantly want to be pushing that envelope. The third thing, I'm going to forget them, the third thing is uh, I needed time on the kit. I just, I, I needed a drum break and so uh, that's uh, Q James Brown. I needed a drum break. So that's going to be um, the third reason. And the fourth reason is 
I wanted to test some things with algorithm and the channel, and it's just smart to do that. Whether you're on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, or if anybody's still on there, um, all of those. Just test things, test things, test things. So anyway, that's the reasons. Put your comments down there. Uh, you know, thumbs it up, thumbs it down. Who cares? But that is my reasons and very practical ones for why I did a five-hour live stream on playing one drum lick or drum pattern for five hours. If you're not subscribed to the channel, you should do that because I'm putting out a ton of content every week. Three videos, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, all at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, uh, coming to you every week, with exception of the last week where I had a vacation. Uh, so subscribe there as well. If you're needing help with your practice time or you're needing some lessons, then you need to jump over to the website, hit up the Drum Better daily program. It is organized and it is made specifically to cater to your needs to work on exactly what you need to work on and to help you see progress. It's made to narrow down the fire hose of information that the internet gives us and to really give you the tools you need to focus on the areas where you need to see progress. So if you're a beginner, there's a whole plan made out just for you. If you're more advanced, then I make personalized lesson plans out for the students all the time. Jump over there, check that out. The link's below this. But whatever you do, I'll see you here in the next video.